One of the new features you'll find in the RAD scheduler for the RAD controls for WinForms is the ability to add custom fields to your appointment objects so that you can easily allow users to enter values into those custom fields when they create or edit appointments in RAD scheduler. For example, I have open here on the screen the RAD controls for WinForms demos, and I've loaded up the RAD scheduler data binding demo. We see a number of appointments here by default, and if I open one of these appointments to edit it by double clicking, we can see that in the standard edit appointment dialog, we have an extra field here for storing email. This is a custom field that's been added to our data source somewhere, but then is also added to the RAD scheduler appointment object so that users can enter the email field and will be directly attached to the scheduler appointment. It's very easy to add this custom field now with the extensibility in the RAD scheduler for WinForms, and we're going to take a look at exactly how you can do this today. So to add a custom field to RAD scheduler, there's five basic steps. First, we need to create a custom appointment class. This class will, of course, inherit from the standard RAD scheduler appointment class. We then need to create a simple appointment factory class, and it sounds more complicated than it is, but RAD scheduler uses a factory class to get the correct appointment type. And so by creating a simple appointment factory, we can return our new custom appointment with email class so that we can use our custom appointments. We then need to create a custom appointment dialog. That's the dialog we popped up that has the text box for entering the email. So we need to inherit again from the standard dialog and then add our custom field. Finally, we need to handle the appointment edit dialog showing event so that when that event fires, we can replace the standard dialog with our new customized dialog. And really that's step four. Finally should be, once we've done all this, the last thing we need to do is map the custom dialog that we're now a editing that has our text box back to our data source so the value that's entered can be saved to the database. So this is the five basic steps, let's get right to it. First of all, before any of this, you need to make sure you have a data source that supports your new custom field. And here in SQL Server 2008 Express, I have a table called appointments, which has all the standard data I need to save an appointment. And I've already added a custom field called email that expects a string value. So you do not have to have a table that looks just like this, but as long as you have a data source that has some custom field, your data source will work. I've just done this for simplicity of demo. So that's where our data will be ultimately saved. Now, back in Visual Studio, I have a standard project created here that has a RAD scheduler for WinForms, a RAD scheduler navigator, and it is bound currently to a scheduler binding data source, an approach that allows you to very easily bind a scheduler to your database. Now, we said the first thing we need to do to make this work is add a custom appointment class. So I'm going to right click on my project and select Add New Item. And I'm just going to select the C Sharp class, and we'll go ahead and call this class an appointment with email to represent that it's a customized appointment that contains the extra email field, and we'll click Add. This public class will inherit from the standard appointment class that is contained within the RAD controls for WinForms. So I will add my using statement for telerc.wincontrols.ui. And now I simply need to add a few items. So first I'll add to this class my standard default constructor, public appointment with email, and then from this constructor, we'll simply call the base constructor. So we'll say base and open and close this. Next, we need to add the field for holding our email data. So we'll set, first create a string. We'll say uh, var email equals string.empty. And then we will add our property for accessing this field. So we'll say public string email and we'll add our getters and setters. And we will actually explicitly add our getters and setters so that we can ha add the property notification to this instead of using the auto properties, which some of you may be familiar with with C Sharp. So we'll say get return this dot email, return our field value, and then in the set, if I can type it here, in the setter for this, we will say if this dot email does not equal value, so in other words, if the value has changed, and we only want to raise this and change the value, if the value has in fact changed, the value is the same, there's no sense to reset the value. So then we'll say this.email equals value, so we'll make the change, and then we'll call this.onProperty on property changed, which is a property coming here from our base class to notify our framework that a property value has changed, and we'll say the email property has changed. 
And that's all we need to do. That is our complete appointment with email custom appointment class. That much is done. We now have a way to store and communicate our value within our RAD scheduler. So I can now close this class. The next thing that I said we need to do, if I go back to our list of notes, we've created our custom appointment class. Now we need to create a simple appointment factory class. So I'll come back to my project and I'll right click and select add new item again. And this time we will add another standard class file. And this class file we will call custom appointment factory. Click add. Custom appointment factory we will also make public. And we will have this inherit from the I appointment factory interface. Or rather we'll have it implement that. So we'll say appointment I appointment factory. And this is once again in the telerik.win.controls.ui namespace. So now once I've said that I want to implement this interface, I can simply right click on this and select implement interface from Visual Studio. That'll create my new method. The single only method that this interface uh, defines is create new appointment. And within create new appointment, all we need to do is get rid of the default not implemented exception and say return new appointment with email. And that means that when we use this appointment factory and the create new appointment method is called, we will return an instance of our new customized appointment that has the email field. So that's all we need to do here. We can save this and close this class. We're now done creating the underlying structure for what we need to do to work with email. Next, we need to start changing the UI. So once again, back to our list. Steps one and two are now done. Very quick, we've done those in under two or three minutes. The next step is to create a custom appointment dialog. So we'll go back to Visual Studio. Now we need to customize some of the UI. So I will now add to Visual Studio a new form, this new custom dialog we're going to do. So I'm going to right click again, select Add New Item. And we want to add a new inherited form so that we can base it on the existing dialog that pops up within RAD Scheduler. So I'm going to click on the Win Windows Forms Items, select a inherited form, and let's go ahead and call this our custom appointment appointment edit form and we'll select add now we need to tell it what do we want to base this f custom form on and we simply need to select now the dialog the edit appointment dialog that's standard in rad scheduler to select the existing edit appointment dialog i simply click browse and then I just need to find the RAD controls assemblies. And so in this case, I can go to my install directory, RAD controls for WinForms, bin. And then we'll find this dialog in the telerik.wincontrols.scheduler.dll. So I'll click that, select open. That will display for me a list of forms that exist within that assembly automatically. And I'll select the edit appointment dialog. And that's what we want to base our form on. So I'll select that, click OK. And now we've created a new WinForms inherited form based on the standard RAD scheduler dialog, which we can see here. So now it's just a simple process of adding our new field for editing our email. So to begin our editing, I'll start by giving us some more room to add our field. So I'll simply stretch my form. I'll then collapse some of the space that's currently taken up by the description text box. What we're currently using in here is a RAD text box. So what we can do to simulate this then is come over to our toolbox, look for the RAD text box, drag and drop this onto our form, correct the spacing, however wide we want to be able to accept our email, and I'll bring up this properties dialog. And the ID for this control needs to be set, something that makes sense. So let's go ahead and set the name of this control to text email. And then let's set the value to be empty. So now we have a field to accept our email. We just need to add a label to this. So we can just go find a standard WinForms label control. And we'll drag this onto our form. And we simply need to set this value to email. And now we're set. We have a label indicating and telling our users what value needs to be entered and a new rad text box in the form to accept that value as well. So now our UI has been updated. We need to add a little code to this custom form as well. So if we go to the code behind for this, so I'm going to select to view the code for our new form. 
then you can see already, just to reinforce the point that this is inheriting from the scheduler dialogues edit appointment dialog, we've got just the standard constructor at this point, the custom edit form constructor, and we need to override a couple of events for this to be complete. So the first thing I'm going to do is override the load settings from event event, or method, so I'm going to say here, protected, override, void load settings from event. And there it comes up in IntelliSense, I can hit tab, provides me with the rest of the signature, and we will go ahead and leave the base call to load settings from event. And then within this we're going to add var appointment with email equals and then we're going to cast that EV, the EV, what is that? That is coming in as an I event, so it's coming in as something, and we know it's going to be our actual appointment with email, so we're going to say EV as appointment with email, that's what this dialog will expect, so we'll cast that to our local variable, and then with our local variable we will say if appointment with email, we don't want the capital, our local variable does not equal null. Then what we're going to do is set the value. So if we've got an appointment object, if we receive the proper object from the load with settings, then we want to go ahead and set the value that's been input into our form. So we'll say, or rather we want to set the value into our form. This is the loading part of this. So we'll say this dot text email, which we just added to our form, dot text equals our appointment with email and dot email. So that's the new property we added, or the new yeah, the new property and field we added to our custom appointment. Now in our custom dialog we've loaded that value so that if a property has a value it's displayed in the form. So that's the loading end of this. Then obviously the other side of this is the saving of the value. If somebody enters a value we need to save it back in to the custom appointment object. And to do that we can override the apply settings to event. So we'll say protected override void, apply settings to event, there's the method we'll override, we'll once again leave the base, but this time we'll make the base fire last, and above it we're going to go ahead and add, once again, var appointment with email, I'll just copy this to save us some time, we'll add that, and now we're going to do another check, and we will start this check once again by checking to see if we have something that's not null, so we'll do one more copy paste, but then instead of setting the text box with the value in the appointment, we're just going to do this in, inver in inverse. So we'll now set the value within the appointment from whatever value is in the text box. This dot text email dot text. And there we go. So now we've completely customized this. The last thing we would need to do in this is override one more method. And we'll come down below this and say protected override telric.windcontrols.ui.ieVent create new event. So we need to override the create new event method and then within this instead of returning standard object we're going to go ahead and return a new appointment with email. So that's how we make sure that when we create the new event we get the proper custom appointment that we've created. And that's all the code we need to add. So now we've done everything we need to do to create our custom appointment, create the custom UI, wire up the custom UI to our custom appointment. And if we go back to our list of tasks, that takes us all the way through number three. Then we are now at number four, where we need to handle the RAD scheduler's appointment edit dialog showing event so that we display this new custom form we've just created. So back in Visual Studio, we'll save our custom form and close it. We're done with this now. And we'll go back to our main form and on our red scheduler, if we hit its properties window and its events, we now need to handle, as I just mentioned, the appointment editing dialog showing event. And we'll do this alphabetically to find it quickly. Appointment edit dialog showing, there it is. I can double click here to create my event handler. Within my event handler for this, I simply need to add a little bit of code, and I can just copy and paste this here to save us some time. So in the appointment dialog showing, let me copy our snippet. What we're going to do is say that this dot appointment dialog, and where is appointment dialog coming from? Well, we need a variable for that. So right above here, add private I edit appointment dialog. And we'll go ahead and give that the name we've already established, appointment dialog. 
equals null. So that's where that's coming from. It's an of the type I added appointment dialog, which of course we'll get again from the telework.win.telework.wincontrols.ui.scheduler.dialog. There's its namespace. We'll import that. So we'll check to make sure that it is null. If it is null, we'll create a new custom appointment edit form, the custom appointment edit form we just created that added the email field. And then we'll set the appointment edit dialog equal to our new custom dialog. So there's how we're injecting the new dialog we've just created into our RAD scheduler. And now that this is wired up, the only other thing we need to do in the actual form itself is on the form load, now that we've already handled the appointment edit dialog showing, we need to do one other thing for our RAD scheduler. We need to change its appointment factory. Remember, we created that very simple custom appointment factory. We need to wire that appointment factory up to our RAD scheduler. So I'm going to, in the form load event, say this dot our scheduler name, RAD scheduler one dot appointment factory. And then I'll set that equal to our new custom appointment factory. And that's all I need to do. So that's now completely wired up. So we're now all the way through our first four steps. There's one step remaining to make this custom field work. And that is mapping our custom dialog field to the data source. So we need to create a mapping between the values entered to the way they'll be persisted. So let's go ahead then and finish up by adding the mapping. We'll do that once again here in the main form. And I can do that by simply getting a reference to my scheduler data source. So I will say scheduler binding data source, which we see here. And then we will set its event, or we will get it reference to its event provider. Well, we got the wrong thing here. We don't need the scheduler data, data set binding source. We need the scheduler binding data source one. Then we'll get the event provider. And then off of event provider, we'll find appointment factory again. Now what we're going to do is set the appointment factory to be the same appointment factory that our actual scheduler is using. So the scheduler binding data source and the RAD scheduler will use the same appointment factory. And we can make that very simple and we can guarantee that by setting appointment factory on the binding data source equal to our RAD scheduler one dot appointment factory. So now we guarantee that our appointment factory for our scheduler is using the right custom appointment factory and then the same setting is automatically now applied to our binding data source. And then to add the mapping information we need, we can come right below this, and I'll just paste it in to save a little bit of time. We're going to add a new appointment mapping info, which is coming from the telework.wincontrols.ui namespace again. We'll add our using statement. And then with our appointment mapping info, we'll create a new instance of it, and then simply through the mappings.add, add a new scheduler mapping for our email field. And to show you the IntelliSense for this so you can understand what it looks like, you see we add a string defining the scheduler property, email is the property, and then a string defining the scheduler data source property. So once again, we have a one-to-one -one mapping with our data source and our scheduler for the demo, but your mapping does not necessarily have to be the same name or one-to-one. -one. So there we go. Now we've completed all five steps. Once again, to review, we've created a custom appointment class. We've created a simple appointment factory class. We've created a custom appointment dialog by creating a new inherited form. We've then handled the appointment edit dialog showing event so that we can properly display our new custom form when somebody creates a new appointment using RAD Scheduler. And finally, map the email field to our data source. Only thing left to do is run this and see if everything works the way we expect it to. So I'll save this and let's go ahead and give it a control F5. And we have one error to correct, it looks like, so let's go ahead and say no. And there we go put the var in the wrong spot. So we'll just go ahead and put string there. That's an improper use of var, one of the keywords in C-sharp 3.0. So now let's go ahead and give control F5. Our application will run. Our application loads up here. Now let's see if we can see when we try to create a new appointment, our new custom email field. So I'll double click on July 11th. Our dialog will open. And there you see our new custom email field where we can enter our email. And if you want to email me, you can reach me at anklin at telerik.com. Hope for this quick introduction into how you add custom fields to the RAD Scheduler for Win Forms, show you how it is an easy process that you can accomplish without a lot of work or a lot of code. And now it should be very easy for you to go forward and add any number of custom fields to your edit appointment dialogues for the RAD Scheduler for Win Forms.